Okay, so let me get this straight. This guy, Paul, this uh, Timothy Chalamet guy, he's a quiz-ass hatterback. Yes, but that's not really how but you... But on top of being the Quiznack hatterback, he's also the Nissan al -Gai. Again, that's not really how you say it, No, 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 no. Don't do your nerdy sh while I'm making a sick point about Dune, bro. Okay, okay, fine. You're right. Go ahead. Dennis Villanueva is a cinematic master, bro. I got a low-grade Dune fever, and Dennis Villanueva is patient for zero say less and personally bro i like definitely do not need you to sit there on your high horse and lecture me about the quiznatch camelbacks or anything of that nature okay because i get it man i truly do okay okay thank you well if i could just make one point to clarify a couple things jesus christmas here we Okay. Dune is a story filled with complex political machinations and deep religious lore. Throughout both of Denis Villeneuve's adaptations, we hear characters referring to our main protagonist, Paul Atreides, as both the Kwisatz Haderach and the If you were confused about the distinction between these two lofty titles, don't worry, I was too before I read the books and did some deep dives on the wikis. So let's start with the Kwisatz Haderach. Before you can understand what or who the Kwisatz Haderach is, you have to understand what the Bene Gesserit is. The Bene Gesserit is an ancient and secretive sisterhood of highly trained mystics who have meticulously honed their minds and bodies throughout the millennia to achieve near superhuman prowess in the areas of combat, statecraft, and social manipulation. In the world of Dune, the Bene Gesserit is feared, respected, and acutely involved in shaping the political landscape of the Imperium. The Bene Gesserit exerts its will on the Imperium in many shadowy ways, but the primary source of its power is through marriage or if they can't swing that, concubinage, which is the regrettably archaic practice of a powerful man keeping a female lover in his noble household without officially tying the knot. For example, Lady Jessica wasn't actually Leto's wife, but merely his concubine. By entangling themselves so closely into the noble families of the Imperium, the Bene Gesserit can keep tabs on major power players and manipulate the tides of political change in their favor. Everyone in the Imperium knows that the Bene Gesserit is always scheming and plotting. Schemes and plots are the same thing. It's pretty much an open secret. But there is one scheme the Bene Gesserit has gone to great lengths to keep secret above all others. The Kwisatz Haderach breeding program. You know how I mentioned before that the Bene Gesserit married into noble houses to gain access to the politics of the Imperium? Yeah, well, there's a little bit more to it than that. By the start of the first Dune book, the Bene Gesserit had been covertly operating a eugenic breeding program that mixed the genetics of particular people with particular attributes in the hopes of eventually creating the Kwisatz Haderach, a superhuman with the ability to see into the future and access the consciousnesses of all who came before him. The Bene Gesserit planned to use and control this superhuman to tighten their stranglehold on the Imperium and guide humanity onto a more enlightened path. But knowing how these ladies tend to operate, I'd take all that enlightened path stuff with a shaker of salt. But anyway, for dozens of generations, this top secret breeding program was going off without a hitch. The Sisterhood felt the program was nearing an end with only one generation left to go until they had the Kwisatz Haderach in their clutches. Lady Jessica was meant to birth an Atreides daughter with her almost husband Leto, and that daughter would go on to marry Fade Rotha Harkonnen. The prospective male heir of their union was meant to be the true Kwisatz Haderach. But unfortunately for them, Lady Jessica decided to gum up the works and defy her order by giving Leto a son instead of a daughter. As a side note, for those who don't know, Sisters of the Bene Gesserit exert so much control over their bodily functions and molecular biology that they're actually able to choose the gender of their offspring in utero. To the Bene Gesserit, Paul Atreides was a genetic misstep, an unknown quantity that represented a recklessly thrown wrench into their carefully laid plans. But if we're looking at things objectively here, how carefully laid were these plans in reality? Is it really that smart of an idea to spend thousands of years crossing bloodlines to create a person with far more power than anyone in your collective? What's to stop them from going rogue and deciding they don't need you after all? Well, as we can see, Silence! pretty much nothing. But this breeding program wasn't the only secret Bene Gesserit plan that eventually blew up in their faces, as you'll learn as we move on to the Lisan al -Gaib prophecy. The Bene Gesserit are certainly shrewd political operators, but they also use religious manipulation to further their designs. 
Throughout the millennia, the Bene Gesserit have sent emissaries to select planets in the Imperium to proliferate useful religious propaganda within the native populations as a part of a program called the Missionaria Protectiva. One of these planets was Arrakis. The idea was to infect the population with superstitions and prophecies that would spread and take root over centuries of oral tradition. Then, once time has turned these superstitions into dogmatic religious gospel, any Bene Gesserit in the future could use them to their advantage should the need arise. On Arrakis, the core of the Bene Gesserit propaganda centered around the concept of the Lisan al Ghaib, which translates to the voice from the outer world. Through the Missionaria Protectiva, the Bene Gesserit implanted the idea of an off world savior into Fremen culture a man born to a Bene Gesserit mother that would free the Fremen from their oppressors and turn Arrakis into a green paradise teeming with life and water. We're never explicitly told by author Frank Herbert whether or not the Lisan Agaib prophecy was meant to be fulfilled by the Kwisatz Haderach, but there are many tenets of the prophecy that could only really apply to someone with advanced Prussian abilities, which any Kwisatz Haderach would have in spades. It's fairly safe to assume that the Bene Gesserit intended for the Fremen to see the Kwisatz Haderach and his reverend mother as messianic figures. With control of the Fremen, who are known as some of the deadliest fighters in the Imperium, the Bene Gesserit would have an unrivaled hold on spice production and the most politically useful planet in the Imperium through the religious allegiance won by two of their most integral apparatchiks. But with all that power, what's stopping those two integral apparatchiks from going rogue and defying the Bene Gesserit order? Again, I have to question the thought process here. For a faction universally renowned for its wisdom and cunning, supposedly comprised of space witches operating at the absolute peak of human performance in every measurable category, they sure do f up a lot. They basically spent 2,000 years creating a superhuman with abilities that far surpassed their own and also laid the groundwork for him to name himself a god and take over the universe. So to close this out, the main difference between the Lisan al Ghaib and the Kwisatz Haderach is that one is a real tangible thing and the other is a product of deep-seated religious manipulation. If the Bene Gesserit never came to Arrakis with their Missionaria Protectiva, the Lisan al Ghaib prophecy would not exist. Anyways, hope that cleared things up for some of you. I have a ton of video essay ideas on the docket for the coming weeks, and I promise not all of them are Dune related. So like and subscribe to see some of those, and I'll catch you next time.